Hi, I'm Kristen Olson. Welcome to Yoga U. We're going to go over high lunge, crescent lunge, whatever you call it today for our tutorial. And I know there are lots of different variations of Anjani Asana or high lunge. The one that we're going to focus on today is one that has really helped me tremendously in opening my hip flexors. So that's what we're going to focus on because that's what I'm most familiar with and I feel like it has a lot, we all have a lot to gain from that. Okay, so we'll start in hands and knees, and we're just going to step the right foot forward, and then lift yourself up so that your left thigh bone and your right shin bone are parallel to each other and perpendicular to the floor. Now, if this bothers your knee, you can always pad your mat up, or you can take your knee to the blanket instead. And then I'd like you to take your hands to your pelvis. Right? With the legs in this position, most of us don't have a pelvis that is spilling forward. Right? And you might notice, as you spill your pelvis forward this way, what it does to your low back. Right? You may also notice that your right hip bone is touching your right thigh bone. What we need to do in our high lunge to keep the low back protected and to open the hip flexor is to keep the pelvis in this upright position. So as we move into the pose, rather than being seduced or interested in straightening the back leg, I'd like you to bend the back leg as much as you need to so that you can keep your pelvis upright. Let that be the priority of the pose. Okay, so we'll take our hands back to the floor. You might need to adjust a little bit on your mat and then tuck the left toes under. First, make sure that your right knee is stacked directly on top of your right ankle and that you're pressing more heavily into the heel of the foot than dumping the weight into the ball of the foot and the toes. Then peek under your pelvis and make sure your heel's not drifting in. We want the heel in line with the ball of the foot. Now that doesn't mean the foot has to be here. It can be anywhere along that plane just as long as it's not drifting in. As you feel steady, take your hands to your thigh bone. And you can see my back leg is very straight here because my torso is not upright. But as I lift my torso upright, the back knee has to bend. Then take your hands to your pelvis and again, find that upright action. So your tailbone is heavy. There's a weight hanging from it. And the pit of the abdomen is pulling back. The right hip bone is not touching the right thigh bone. Don't lose this pelvis as you move your back leg towards straight. And for some of you with tight hip flexors, it may not move very far. Okay, so the pelvis is sort of spilling in this posterior tilt, similar to your cat, your cat pose. And against that, your left thigh bone is trying to straighten, but the pelvis takes precedence. Then maybe lift the arms up. And as you lift your arms up, knit the front ribs in. Take another inhale. Maybe look up and press the palms. And then hands to the floor. Step the right foot back to meet the left. And then drop to your knees. Okay, so when your pelvis stays upright and you're moving the back thigh bone in resistance of it, you're getting a deeper stretch through the hip flexors, even though it might not look as fancy as some other poses. Okay, so we'll step the left foot forward okay, and try to adjust so that you're roughly having the shin bone and the thigh bone parallel to each other. And you'll notice in this position that it's very unlikely that you're just sitting with the left hip bone on the left thigh bone. You want to lift your hips, or the front hips, away from the left thigh bone. And maybe even here, you start to feel that stretch in your right hip flexor. So this is the pelvis that we want to recreate once we make the pose more challenging. Okay, so maybe move the left foot forward, take your hands to the floor, tuck the right toes under, lift the right knee up. Check and make sure your left knee's over your ankle, the right heel is in line with the ball of the foot. As you feel steady, climb your hands to your thigh bone. And then when you're ready, the torso lifts the rest of the way up, but the back knee bends as you lift up. The other reason for that is so that your low back stays nice and long rather than straightening the leg, tipping the pelvis, and really narrowing or shortening the low back. 
Okay, so the back knee bends, the pelvis is upright. Knee over the ankle, then maybe lift the arms. Move the back leg towards straight without caring if it goes completely straight. Okay, the tailbone is heavy, and against that, press the right thigh bone a little straighter. Take another inhale, maybe look up, press the palms, hands to the floor. Take the left foot back to meet the right, drop down to your knees, and that is high lunge or crescent lunge. <laughs>